Now, Canadians across the country are talking about sexual harassment and assault. As far as Janice Dumont is concerned, it's a good thing. She's a specialist in sexual assault at the Women's College Research Institute in Toronto. She says coming forward is beneficial for victims, but there are risks. And Janice Dumont joins us now from Toronto. So let's talk about, uh, you know, the benefits and the risks here. What are the benefits of someone coming forward with their experience of sexual assault or harassment? Well, I think um, disclosure just generally can make the invisible visible, and this is really important. Um, you know, it can give the, the public, uh, relevant professionals, uh, po policymakers, just a more striking sense of the sheer scope of these problems and the insidiousness of these types of issues like sexual assault and, and um, sexual harassment. Uh, for women, I mean, it's been linked in the research literature, uh, disclosure has been linked to a woman's sense of restored well-being. If, and this is what's so key, you know, women who disclose are appropriately supported, they're believed and not judged, it can be a really powerful healing experience for them. And then there's some people who say they don't want to share their story because then putting it out into the public is the beginning of the experience for them, right? So what are the risks if they aren't prepared for coming forward? Yes, I, I think, first of all, um, you know, women shouldn't have to disclose. They need to want to disclose. And I would say if women are disclosing either online or offline, they need to have, you know, good supports in place. It may just be a supportive family member, a friend. It could be a professional victim advocate, a counsellor. Um, but we know, you know, you just need to look at the comments and um, in the comment sections of some of these stories that, you know, women are often blamed for their own victimizations. Uh, they're discredited, and you know this is this is the further victimization they sometimes experience. And um, it takes courage to come forward. And I think, you know, it's important to have good supports in place when you do. And what about uh, re-victimization? Some people just don't want to relive the whole experience, or even have other people get involved. I think that's okay. Okay, it should be up to the individual's choice. I think the problem is. Um, when I when I look specifically, you know, at the issue of sexual assault is, again, when women disclose, they're disbelieved, they're discredited, they're judged, they're, you know, accused of asking for having been sexually assaulted. They deserve to be raped because they were drinking or partying. And we need to really work as a society to dispel these really negative stereotypes about women who are sexually assaulted. When women disclose and they're supported and they're believed, again, you know, that, that can be very powerful. That can be healing. But... Um, until we have a really supportive system in place, including the criminal justice system, which is, you know, where a lot of women say they feel re-victimized, um, we shouldn't expect women, you know, necessarily to come forward. And with all of these conversations going on right now, Janice, what do you think would be the, the best case scenario moving forward? Could, could we actually change our society based on what we've been discussing recently? Well, you know, I think all the media attention has been really great, like like bringing attention to the issues of sexual assault and sexual harassment and other forms of gender-based violence. I guess what concerns me is that um, a lot of, you know, the, these are um, not not rare cases. It's important to highlight them, but they're, they're high profile. Uh, they involve high profile persons, and they're not really that representative of maybe the everyday victimizations that women actually experience. And I know people are talking about this as a watershed moment, and hopefully in some regard it is. But, um, you know, it makes me wonder why over a thousand missing or murdered Aboriginal women wasn't a tipping point for change. And so maybe there might be people out there thinking their experience isn't as serious as the ones that we're talking about, so they won't come forward? Is that what you mean? I, I mean that the cases that get the attention or that are viewed as newsworthy in some regard may not be reflective of most of the types of victimizations that women experience out there. Right. Not every case involves a high-profile person. Right. And so do we hear the other stories? Yeah, we need to hear those other stories. Um, there, there, there have been, you know, many points in, in time that it should have been a watershed moment where we said this is just no longer acceptable, and as a society, we need to begin to address this in a really serious manner. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my worry is what happens when the media goes away? How are we going to ma maintain this momentum, this interest in and concern for women who've been victimized and actually 
uh, morph it into some kind of positive change. Mm -hmm. Great to get your thoughts on this, Janice. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you very much. That is Janice Dumont, a specialist in sexual assault at the Women's College Research Institute in Toronto.